With the increase in popularity of Core XY 3D printers, we've seen a race from many of the large manufacturers to try to meet that demand. One of these companies is Chidi Tech. They've been making printers since 2014 and specialized in fully enclosed box frame machines, so transitioning over to Core XY really made sense for their next gen lineup. What I don't think anyone was expecting was for them to release three printers at the same time. To be fair, two of them are very similar to each other other than size, but this was still very ambitious. The smallest of the lot, the XSmart 3, launched without a hiccup, and I've seen mostly positive feedback on it. However, the larger two X Plus and X Max 3 had some issues right out the gate. GD Tech ended up pulling them to revise these issues, and a few months later, they were re-released. A few months ago, Chidi Tech sent out the reworked XMAX 3 for review, and today we are going to be diving into this printer. We'll go over the printer specs, what has changed, how it prints, and I will share my thoughts based on my time with this printer so far. So, with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to Voxel PLA for sponsoring today's video. Voxel PLA aims to make 3D printing more accessible with a reliable and affordable filament. This filament is used exclusively in a 150 machine print farm. Their PLA Plus is now available in 12 great colors, with my favorite being Firetruck Red and Lavender Purple. Voxel PLA performance is excellent, even on high-speed printers. Pricing is $16.99 per kilogram, and at three spools, shipping is free within the US. Bulk discounts are also available. Voxel PLA has also expanded to offer printer upgrades like the Vision Enclosure for the Bamboo Lab P1P or the Bento Box Filter. This two-stage filter is compatible with Bamboo Lab printers and even the Voron Trident. It includes everything needed and setup is super quick, so you can get back to printing right away. Links will be in the description to voxelpla.com so you can find out more about their high quality affordable filaments and printer upgrades. Before we jump into the specs, let's first go over the changes that were made for the final release. The main issue with the initial version was that the bearings that held the lead screws for the bed were fixed into plastic and not the metal frame of the printer. Due to thermal expansion during the print, this led to inconsistencies in both the first layer and throughout the print. The x 3 now has an entirely metal interior frame that everything attaches to. They also put a large beam across where the lead screw bearings mount for added rigidity, which resolved the issue. They also swapped out the carbon rods on the x-axis for hollow steel rods, which I think was a much better option. Steel rods have been battle tested in this application and really require little to no maintenance. Those are the primary hardware changes and we'll touch on a few other changes shortly. Getting into the specs, the XMAX 3 is a large fully enclosed Core XY 3D printer with a build volume of 325 by 325 by 315 millimeters. For motion, all axes are using linear rods and bearings and the printer uses 10 millimeter belts. The printer's structural frame is primarily made up of steel and it has a bulky plastic exterior. This gives the printer an overall footprint of roughly 553 by 635 by 601 millimeters with a spool on the back. The printer also weighs 66 pounds, so a team lift is definitely recommended. There are handles on the outside of the printer which help get it propped up onto a workbench. The bed is a fairly beefy 6mm plate that has embedded magnets for the flex plate system. The actual bed surface included is a double-sided powder-coated PEI plate. Adhesion's been great on it, but some of the darker paint has started coming off from my ABS and ASA printing. The bed rides up and down on four linear rods and two lead screws, but it is single motor driven. The Z-Motor is in the back center and a closed belt wraps from the motor pulley to each lead screw. The tool head has a direct drive extruder and all metal hot end. The gearing on the extruder reminds me quite a bit of an LGX. The hot end's heatsink almost looks like a clone of Bamboo Labs, but it has a bimetal heat break and a circular ceramic heater core. The x 3 ships with two hot ends, one for standard printing and one with a hardened steel nozzle for abrasives. There are two fans, one smaller fan for the heatsink, and a 5015 for part cooling. For bed leveling, the printer uses a BL Touch. I'm actually not a big fan of the BL Touch from a few past experiences I've had, but I know a handful of people that swear by them. I did run into an instance or two of the probe not deploying, but this was corrected by adjusting the set screw on top of the device. On the right side of the printer is an auxiliary fan which really helps with part cooling, especially for PLA prints. In the bottom back of the printer, there is a 24 volt, 300 watt chamber heater, which is not something we commonly see. For anyone interested in printing strong functional parts in a demanding material, this will be a huge plus. There is a chamber thermistor that is used for controlling the heater on the upper right side of the printer. 
There's also a carbon filter located on the back. For connectivity, this printer is running Clipper and includes a Wi-Fi dongle, so you can print wirelessly or over USB using the full-sized USB port. I love that they went with a full-size USB so you can use a flash drive instead of a micro SD card or a standard SD card, but it's located on the very back top right of the printer, which I just can't wrap my head around. Interfacing with the printer is done via its 5-inch touchscreen, which runs its own firmware. I wish they had just gone with clipper screen, but for being their own setup, they did a pretty good job. Thumbnails are pretty slow to load when you click on a file, which can be a little annoying, but everything else has worked well. For electronics, under the printer we have two 450 watt, 24 volt meanwhile power supplies. I was happy to see them using quality power supplies on this machine. On the back of the printer we can find the controller, which is a custom maker based skipper board. This board has both the clipper host installed as well as a separate MCU for controlling all the printer's hardware. This printer uses an MKS EMMC module for clipper instead of a micro SD card. For drivers, there are three 2209s used on the main controller, and there is a separate toolhead board that contains the driver for the extruder. This board also has an accelerometer for input shaping and is connected to the main board over USB-C. There's a separate MOSFET board and a controller fan on the back panel. The controller fan is wired to an always on port, so even when idle, it is running at full speed. I mostly kept the printer in the garage just due to its sheer size, but if you're going to be working in the same room, you might want to swap that fan for possibly the LEDs, so that way you can control it through firmware. The printer came packaged nicely, and the setup was pretty straightforward. It involved taking out a couple of boxes and foam that were inside the printer, cutting a couple of zip ties, and removing four screws that held the bed in place during shipping. Powering on the printer for the first time, the screen interface guides you step by step through the initial setup process. It first has you preheat the bed and use the included piece of leveling paper to set your Z offset. Then it does a 25 point bed mesh followed by input shaping calibration before you are ready to print. When it came time to load filament, I discovered one of my biggest annoyances with this printer. The spool holder is located on the back of the printer, which seems to have become a trend lately with a lot of printer manufacturers and it's just something that I will never understand. However, on the XMAX 3, they give you a sealed container and desiccant for the back of the printer to keep moisture out of your filament. In theory, this sounds nice, but in actuality, it makes it near impossible to load filament without standing behind the printer. I ended up removing the filament enclosure and just using the spool mount, which did work, but it still feels like a major oversight. Luckily, there are some mods already out there that I highly recommend over the stock setup. After loading in a spool of red voxel PLA, I printed out the pre-sliced 17 minute Benchy. This is where I noticed a change in the firmware from the original XMAX 3. The printer now ships with variable mesh enabled by default, which in my opinion is a huge plus. We covered how this works in detail in a previous video, but to summarize, based on your sliced file, the printer will create a bed mesh before each print, but only in the area you are printing. This means that the meshes are faster and more accurate. Once the first layer printed, I got to see the XMAX 3 really pick up speed, and it did a great job with the Benchy. There were some super fine strings, but overall I was very pleased. There was no obvious ringing, and the auxiliary fan did a great job of cooling the part. Moving on to slice up my own files, I found the next big change from the initial release of the XMAX 3, and that was the slicer. Previously, they shipped with a slicer that was based off of Cura, but the new one comes with a modified version of Prusa Slicer. There are some really nice additions to the slicer. For one, there is an entire help page that has quite a few guides built in. Then there is a device page that lets you see the fluid web interface directly from in the slicer. On top of that, you can set chamber temperature in the slicer, which makes enabling it automatically very simple. From what I can tell, it looks like the majority of these features were ported over from Orca Slicer. Orca does already have profiles for the new Chitty Tech printers, so if you're already familiar with that slicer, I would just stick with it. But for the sake of the review, I did use Chitty Slicer for all of my testing. I also almost exclusively stuck with the settings that they had in place, other than some small adjustments for print settings. For speed, the printer's firmware is set to 20k acceleration and 600 millimeters a second velocity, but this is overwritten in the slicer. Travel, solid infill, and infill are not adjusted down, but the default in the slicer is 10k. 5K for perimeters and 3K for external perimeters. For printing, the speed range is 200 to 300 millimeters a second, depending on the print moves. This is still very fast, but the advertised speeds are more marketing than what you will actually be using in most instances. During my Voron 2.4 build a couple months ago, I used the XMAX 3 to batch out panel clips for that printer. I went with the Annex Engineering ones and was able to batch out roughly 20 of them in ABS. 
The adaptive meshing has worked really well and adhesion has been awesome for all of my ABS and ASA printing. I planned on using the active heater once I experienced some warping and I just didn't get that warping. For the same 2.4 build, I printed out sturdy handles and the Nevermore carbon filter in the same ABS. I ran a couple batches of ERCF parts in Polymaker Galaxy ASA and I was pretty pleased with the results. Due to the importance of tolerances with many of these parts, I spent a bit of time dialing in flow, which I needed to scale back on, and I also ended up dropping down speeds by about 50 millimeters a second. For PLA printing, I removed the top cover and did my best to leave the front door open. In PLA, I printed out a large spool holder for the 2.5 kilogram roll of polyhex that we tested in last week's video, along with a couple of Halloween prints. Results were pretty good, but there is some room for improvement. A lot of it is in the slicer profiles. The support gap defaults were too far, and I think that speeds are set on the higher side. I understand wanting to print fast, but there has to be a balance between speed and quality. On the ghost print, I also noticed a pattern in the Z-axis that I thought may have been caused by the bed lead screws. However, when I printed a single walled tower right after in a different PLA, I didn't see any of that same pattern. I'm wondering if it might be flow related, but it's kind of interesting because I didn't really see it show up in any of the other prints that I ran. I also printed Mark Rober's full-size one-piece compliant blaster, which turned out awesome. This model is incredible and was a great test of the XMAX 3's meshing. The first layer looks great and the compliant mechanism had no issues. So what are my thoughts on this printer after the last few months? Let's start with the pros. At the time of recording, the price of the XMAX 3 is $949. This is a lot of printer for the money. From its overall footprint and the rigid construction down to the electronics, I'm actually surprised that it is not more than it is. On top of that, it's running true clipper firmware and you have root access to the controller for those that want it. With the direct drive all metal hot end, enclosed chamber with a heater and auxiliary fan, your options for materials to print with are nearly endless. Lastly, Chitty Tech, from my own experience and from what I've heard from a couple of others, does a really good job with customer support. As much as I wish they had caught the issues with the XMAX 3 before the initial launch, they did a really great job of handling it. They immediately issued a public statement, paused pre-orders, and gave any that had received the option to swap or get a refund. GD Tech is definitely up there for me in customer service and how they handle themselves. Moving on to my gripes, the printer is bulky. Separate from it having a large build volume, the outer plastic shell adds quite a bit of heft to it, so you really need a fairly large dedicated space. Placement of both the spool holder and flash drive are less than ideal. I would definitely print a different spool holder, and if you plan on using a flash drive instead of the wireless transfer, a USB extension cable to bring it to the front would be my recommendation. Another part of the bulky shell is that when a print starts off, it's kind of difficult to get a really good view of it. I found myself leaning in trying to get just the right angle to make sure that the part was laying down properly. For the price, I wish that they had just included a camera. You can add a USB camera and Chitty is releasing a $40 camera upgrade, but it feels like it should have just shipped with one. And lastly, once again, I'm just not a huge fan of the BL Touch. I've heard mixed things about how it performs in a enclosed warm printer. And given what a lot of other manufacturers are using, it would have been really nice to have seen them using either load cells or some kind of a strain gauge. Most of my complaints are things that can be solved relatively easily, but I just really wish they had spent a little bit more time on those finishing touches. The XMAX 3 is a good printer, and I feel like for most people that are just wanting a large Core XY 3D printer to print large parts, they are going to be happy. But had they spent some time on these little details, it could have been the difference in my opinion from a good printer and a great 3D printer. And that has been the Chitty Tech XMAX 3. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. If you do have any other questions, be sure to let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. As always, if I don't know the answers to your questions, I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to try to get those answers for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week. So there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.